Yesterday, the sun was shining, the yeah. temps were high, and from the graphics we saw yesterday, it could be the last 90 degree day we see in a while, not ever. But for a while, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. But I mean, it comes at a cost because honestly, yesterday felt great in the shade because mm -hmm. of the low humidity. But today, even though temperatures are going to be cooler, it is way more humid outside. Absolutely. So here's a look at some visibility. You can see that fog has really developed mainly east of San Antonio right now. New Braunfels visibility down to a quarter of a mile, down to a quarter mile visibility along San Marcos as well. So up 35, that's where we've got uh, some areas of fog. And even out along I-10 too, toward Gonzales visibility is down to a quarter of a mile. There will be some patchy fog around the San Antonio metro area until about sunrise. Outside right now you can see those clouds out there. It's mostly cloudy in 71, but the biggest thing you notice is the humidity. Dew points are up in the upper 60s. And here's the thing. Humidity is going to be with us for the entire week. Dew points are not going to drop uh, all week long. So expect the humidity every day. That means mild mornings. You're not going to need a jacket at all this week. In fact, here's a look at temperatures this morning. 66 in New Braunfels. Good morning, Yvaldi. It's 67 degrees. 64 in Rock Springs. 73 in Del Rio. 67 in Pleasanton and 69 in Kerrville. Here is the impressive thing. Dew points have gone up by some 20 to 25 degrees from 24 hours ago. Yesterday morning, it was nice and dry and comfortable outside, but dew points have soared by some 20 degrees just within 24 hours. And here's a look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast. Cloudy out there right now, mainly a cloudy morning, maybe a sprinkle, uh, but you're not going to see any significant rain. Then we'll see some clearing in around noon 81 and in the afternoon 86 for the high in San Antonio. So it's going to be warm and in fact even though temperatures are going to be some five degrees cooler than yesterday it may actually feel warmer outside because of the higher humidity let's take a look at the weather setup you can see that there's tropical storm norma right in between cabo san lucas and the western coast of mexico this is bringing us some of that cloud cover some pacific moisture uh, norma is going to be uh, falling apart across mexico throughout the day today but it is going to send south central texas some moisture. So let me show you the future cast early tomorrow morning, right around seven o'clock. That's when we could have some streamer showers around San Antonio, not rain for everybody, but perhaps dampen spots for the early morning commute. As we go throughout the day, we should see a lull in the activity, but in the afternoon, there will likely still be one or two showers around. Chance for rain tomorrow is 30% and the chance for rain is much higher out to the west in Valverde County and parts of Edwards. Edwards County in the Hill Country, as this is where the energy from Norma is expected to concentrate. So when we talk about rainfall, the most rain potential is up across parts of Valverde County and potentially in the Hill Country. Unfortunately, least amount of rain for areas around San Antonio. Just those streamer showers that can cause you to turn on your windshield wipers if you're driving around once or twice. What is really going to impact everybody this week, I feel like, is the winds. So take today to tie down Halloween decorations. That's why I put the Halloween decorations here in the back because by Monday night and Tuesday night we could potentially see wind gusts of up to 35 miles per hour. So I mentioned the daily chances of hit or miss rain tomorrow 30% Tuesday 30%. We do have slightly better rain chances on Wednesday and coming up in the next half hour. I'll talk about those chances for better chances for rain on Wednesday. The big story is a very spring like week and those winds may cause the, some some headaches if you don't tie down those Halloween decorations. You may be searching for Jack Skellington later on down this week if you don't tie down those uh, decorations. Do you guys have a Jack Skellington? We don't. Okay. We don't. In fact, we just got a home, so we're still kind of working into it. We haven't gotten any direct is decorations. Is this the first at Halloween at the home? Yes. It Woo! Is. And it'll be the first holidays, too. So. Nice. Yeah, we're excited. <laughs> I expect top tier decorations. All right, Max. You're going to be competing gonna, with Sarah Costa. Are you going to fund me for that? We'll see. Okay. So. Yeah, we'll have some fundraisers in your honor. Time now, 616, 70 degrees. All right, we have a lot of items being recalled from cars to toy trains. We're going to let you know what you need to know in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. We have a number of recalls to tell you about. The first one, Tesla recalling 55,000 newer Model X cars. And the reason? Potential brake fluid safety problems. Now, the National Highway Safety Administration says 
This problem affects Model X cars made between 2021 and 2023. The recalled cars are failing to detect low brake fluid, which in turn increases your risk of crashing. Tesla has released a free software update to correct the problem. If you do own one of these cars at risk, you will be notified by mail in December. All right, from Tesla's to toys, Fisher Price recalling roughly 21,000 of the Thomas and Friends wooden railway troublesome truck and crates. So Fisher Price says a small plastic piece with a high powered magnet that connects to trucks and trains, it can actually loosen or detach that poses a big choking and ingestion hazard for your kids. Now, the toy trains sold nationwide at Barnes and Nobles and other specialty stores from February of last year to August of this year. Some even sold on Amazon. Time now, 620, 70 degrees. Performances put on pause. A West Side staple shutting their doors just temporarily, trying to get a much needed facelift. After the break, we're gonna explain what this means for the city's West Side. Day of the Dead dates back to pre-Columbian, pre-Hispanic indigenous traditions in Mexico. The Aztecs, as they conquered people, incorporated their traditions into the Aztec pantheon. So we know that these are borrowings from uh, Mesoamerican peoples. So one of the questions is why these dates? October 31st, November 1st, November 2nd. It is because that the ancient calendar, the ancient sacred calendar, these are what are known as cross-quarter days. They fall exactly between fall equinox and winter solstice. So this is exactly the midpoint. And it is understood by ancient peoples that this is the moment when the veil that separates the world of the living and the world of the dead is at its thinnest. What's interesting, of course, is that it's not unique only to Mexico, this moment of, of linking back to ancestors. So it happens that in Japan and Shinto traditions, it's Obon. In Celtic traditions, it, it's Samain. As the sun is losing the battle and the, and the night is gaining, it's universally felt that this is the resurgence of the domain of of the dead and, and our ancestors. Good morning and welcome back. So San Antonio based stories exclusively performed at a West Side Theater. They're actually going to be put on pause. And the reason it's a good reason overdue renovations. The iconic Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center expected to be revamped into a destination performance theater. Archimelia Juarez tells us where the performances will be held during this construction and what the renovation means for our West Side. The blue Art Deco exterior sitting in the city's cultural arts district. Our theater, the Guadalupe Theater, it's a treasure. It's our jewel on the west side. The Guadalupe Culture and Arts Theater is known for hosting Cine Festival, the largest Latino film festival in the country, and performances highlighting the Hanna culture. We've interviewed people in our community about their stories um, and about their struggles in order to educate our students and our audiences about the stories that are not told in our history books. Built in the 1940s, the theater will be temporarily closed for the next two years as it undergoes a total overhaul. The stage, the backstage, the seating, the plumbing, movie projectors, building acoustics will all be modernized. We are now at the point that we have vintage equipment. So part of the reason the theater is closing is because it's become a liability for a lot of people. You can see this watch your step sign. This is what you're watching out for. The floor is sinking. So we're not lying when we say that, that it's being held together with duct tape. Repairs are set to cost close to six million dollars, paid for in part by tax dollars and an anonymous foundation donor. We deserve the best facilities, just like there are facilities with the best amenities in other parts of town. Uh, we deserve to have those in the west side of San Antonio. Performances will continue through partnerships with other local theaters. The theater is set to reopen in late 2025. But it's very exciting that it is going to get a much needed facelift. Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 627, 70 degrees. We got a lot more coming up on GMSA. We'll be right back.
morning. Welcome back and happy Sunday, 6.30 this morning. It is October 22nd. So yesterday, yeah. did you make it out and about? Did you do anything fun? You know, I was in the shade for a bit yesterday. It felt fine, even though we had record heat. What was really cool, though, Max, is a lot of people sent in pictures to our KSAC Connect uh, feature on our weather app of this. Look how nice. beautiful this is. A lot of people saw this. It's called a 22 degree halo. Basically, this happens anytime you have a thin layer of those high thin cirrus clouds outside like we did yesterday. Cirrus clouds are made completely out of ice crystals and they refract the light into a perfect halo around the sun. It's common to see it, especially when we've got dry air in place and just that thin layer of cirrus clouds. So that was the case yesterday. Thank you so much for sending in this KSAC Connect picture. You can send in pictures if you have to our KSAC Connect feature too on our website or on our weather app. Now again, dry conditions uh, usually needed to see uh, those kinds of uh, features in the clouds, but it is not dry outside right now. It is humid. Dew points have soared into the upper six We've even got some areas of fog out near New Braunfels where temperatures are close to the dew point. 66 in New Braunfels. It's 68 at Port SA, 69 Rio Medina and in Kerrville, 70 in Hondo, Stinson area at 68. So in your case, 12 hour forecast cloudy out there right now and we will see mostly cloudy skies by noon. A few peaks of sunshine 81 and then the high temperature today is going to be 86 degrees. So not as warm as yesterday, but a lot more humid so you'll notice the humidity you'll notice the warmth throughout the day today and humidity isn't going anywhere in fact in the week ahead we have daily chances for hit or miss rain not a guarantee for rain 30 to 40 percent chance coming up in the forecast i'll detail these rain chances and we'll talk about how it would be best for you to tie down those halloween decorations today with the wind ahead details coming up max Thank you, Sarah. We had a lot of overnight news. This is new this morning. SAPD searching for a suspect who stabbed his ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend in the leg. Take a look. This was the scene. It happened a little after 2 a.m. today. Uh, this is Southeast Military Drive. It was a parking lot of City Base Cinema San Antonio. Police on the scene telling us the new couple met up in the parking lot. That's when the woman's ex-boyfriend showed up. The ex and the current boyfriend started fighting. That ex pulled out a knife, stabbed the new boyfriend in the leg. He was taken to the hospital at last check stable. The police did find a gun in the parking lot, but the suspect had already taken off at that time. Investigation is ongoing, but police say they do know who is responsible. Now to the latest in the war between Israel and the terrorist organization Hamas. It is entering week two of fighting. Some big developments overnight, including the new positioning of another United States military ship, in the region. ABC's Liz Landers shows us the bit of relief that came yesterday for millions in Gaza. The world watching the border of Israel and Gaza this morning as a ground invasion is expected soon and airstrikes in Gaza have ramped back up. And for the first time, the State Department has confirmed that an American was killed in action fighting for Israeli defense forces. Israeli defense forces have told their soldiers that they will enter Gaza to, quote, destroy Hamas fighters and their infrastructure. As he left church on Saturday, President Joe Biden not directly answering reporters when asked about the potential for Israeli invasion. Encouraging Israelis to delay invasion. Two Americans kidnapped by Hamas have been released, but at least 10 more Americans and hundreds of other people remain as hostages in Gaza territory. Though the president insists U.S. boots will not fight on the ground in the Middle East, the Secretary of Defense announced late Saturday that another Navy carrier, the USS Eisenhower, has been redirected to the Middle East to, quote, bolster regional defense efforts against Iran and help the Israelis. As the war reaches into week two, more than 1,400 have been killed in Israel and thousands more in Gaza, and the humanitarian crisis in that small area deteriorates. Many, like 10-year-old Aiden and his mother, are Palestinian Americans trying to evacuate the area after experiencing the horrors of war. It's indescribable. Israel is bombing Gaza like no one has seen before. But a glimmer of hope for civilians in the area came yesterday as 20 trucks from the World Food Program finally moved through the Rafah crossing from Egypt into Gaza. 
The United Nations estimates that a half a million people have evacuated into emergency shelters in Gaza. The World Food Program and USAID continue to call for humanitarian aid to that area in the coming days. In Washington, Liz Landers, ABC News. Well, back here in Texas, a real estate development near Houston has become a hotbed of criticism, allegedly offering permanent housing to undocumented immigrants. Media outlets reporting that the Library County community was housing undocumented migrants, prompting a surge in crime. John Harris, CEO of the Colony Ridge Development, testified before the House State Affairs Committee, saying nothing was done illegally. Now, the Texas Attorney General, Ken Paxton, publicly releasing a letter to Congress, writing Colony Ridge has drawn far too many people and chaos to be tolerated by the state of Texas. And sticking with Texas, the city of San Marcos, well, they've settled a lawsuit over the 2020 Trump train. Remember that incident with the Biden campaign bus. Four supporters of Joe Biden accusing police in San Marcos of failing to protect them from vehicles with Trump flags when those vehicles surrounded the Biden bus, cutting off in front of it and abruptly breaking. Under the settlement, the city is required to issue a public apology and pay a total of $175,000 to the plaintiffs. The city must also provide mandatory police training on how to properly respond to voter intimidation. Now, this settlement does not affect a separate lawsuit filed by the same four plaintiffs against eight people they allege were responsible for what they call harassment. In a community still recovering from that tragic shooting at Robb Elementary, the memory of Lexi Rubio lives on with a special 5K run in her honor. Lexi's legacy run is in its second year, taking place this weekend on what would have been her 12th birthday. An in-person run held yesterday morning in Uvalde. Participants also able to join online. Uh, proceeds from the run will go towards Lives Robbed. That's a nonprofit started by those affected by the tragedy, including Lexi Rubio's family. Some days I run and it feels good, but some days I run and it's, I'm sad that day. Even on the difficult days I push myself, but today it wasn't a difficult day because I was surrounded by so much love. Remember Lexi, one of those 19 fourth grade students shot and killed in May of last year. Well, one in eight women in the United States will develop breast cancer during their lifetimes. Now, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's an opportunity to make sure that you and your family have the right information to stay safe. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves. Joining us at 8 a.m., a breast radiologist, oncologist with UT Health San Antonio, MD Anderson Cancer Center. We're going to be talking about what you need to know through the month and through your life. If you have comments, questions, concerns, you can post them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of ksat.com. Then join us at 8 a.m. for the full conversation. Time now, 638, 70 degrees. How long did you guys get to... Uh... The very next day to open up. All right, the owner of the business telling us why the health department shut down his restaurant and what he's done to fix things behind the kitchen door. That's next, right here on GMSA. Before we head to break, we know a lot of you probably trying to enjoy those fun fall festivities today. Well, humidity is up. Temps up too. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey what you need to know before you make any plans. Ming Garden Express, located in the 7100 block of Highway 90 West, was temporarily shut down by a health inspector in late August, mainly due to a roach infestation. Live roaches were found in a container of clean utensils and dead roaches were found on pans stored on a shelf. Roach droppings were found in the corners of the cold hold doors and the inspector wrote there was heavy roach activity throughout the business. They were also told to repair and seal several holes and gaps in the walls, floors and ceilings. The inspector gave them an 81 and told them to call when they were ready to reopen. How long did you guys get uh... yeah, the very next day to open up? I stopped by this week to see if they'd made improvements. The owner didn't want to talk on camera, but he did take me behind the kitchen door. He said the roaches came in a delivery the same day the inspector showed up. He also says they were closed for a day to clean things up and the bugs are no longer a problem. 
Fabitos, located in the 7300 block of West Military Drive, was also shut down by a health inspector who gave them a 77 on their September inspection. The business was storing utensils in room temperature water with food debris floating in it. There were numerous live and dead roaches throughout the place, including in the hand sink. The business also told to stop using unapproved chemicals for pest control. An open bottle was found right next to single-use to-go containers. The ice machine was missing a panel that protects the water and ice from contamination. In all, the business had eight repeat violations. The business was not open during their regular business hours when I stopped by this week. Gorditas Estiatorion, located in the 1300 block of South WW White Road, got a 76 on their September inspection. They had to remove food from a refrigeration unit that wasn't working. Eggs left at room temp were temping at 81 degrees. They were tossed out. There was no sanitizing solution in the dishwasher. Workers were touching food with bare hands and not properly washing their hands. Ants were crawling around a sugar container, and they were using recycled grocery bags to store raw meat. A reinspection was ordered for early October. For Behind the Kitchen Door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Seeing those stories really makes you rethink where you're going to go eat. So Metro Health notified KSAT Thursday evening that Fabito's was allowed to reopen. All right. I don't want to go out to eat today. Uh, <laughs> is it a good day to go outside, though? Maybe go for a good walk? I mean, yeah. It is humid, though. That's the thing, Max. So yesterday was nice and dry, even though it was record, a, a record high was broken. But hey, things are humid out there and temperatures this morning, not in the 50s like they were yesterday. It's 70 degrees in San Antonio, 69 in Kerrville, 73 in Del Rio, 66 in New Braunfels. Good morning in Pleasanton. It's 67 degrees and it's 68 in Creso Springs. Temperatures 10 to 15 degrees warmer than how they were to start the day yesterday. Uh, and it's all because humidity is higher. Dew points are in the upper 60s. That is near the top of the scale there. We will be seeing dew points in the 70s at times this week, so noticeably humid and the humidity is not going anywhere. In fact, we do have areas of fog this morning, especially east of San Antonio. Areas like New Braunfels, Gonzales, LaGrange, visibility down to a quarter of a mile in New Braunfels and Gonzales, visibility down to six miles in Seguin. Now over the next hour and a half or so, we could be seeing some patchy fog around San Antonio visibility in Castroville down to seven miles. And in spite of the cloudy start, we are going to be able to see some sun today. It's uh, going to be mainly cloudy in 75 at 10 as we head toward noon, 81 and mostly cloudy. And then this afternoon, 86 for the high. So temperatures are going to be some five degrees cooler than yesterday, but it is going to stay humid all day. So you're going to feel every degree of that 86 degrees. Make sure to stay hydrated. Temperatures about five degrees warmer than the average. 86 in San Antonio, 88 in Castroville, Seguin, you'll be at 88 degrees, 84 in Kerrville, 88 in Bandera, 85 in Uvalde, 87 in Divine, 90 degrees in Floresville, and close to 90 in Pleasanton. All right, as I mentioned, humidity is not going anywhere in the week ahead. It's going to stay humid every single day. We also are going to have daily chances for hit or miss rain. I've got to emphasize rain this week is not a guarantee for everybody. 30 to 40% chance through Wednesday and only isolated rain expected in our forecast. The one day that rain chances are slightly higher Wednesday. I'll show you that forecast here in a second, but here's the reason why we're going to have isolated rain as early as tomorrow. It's because tropical storm Norma is expected to fall apart across Mexico, bringing moisture our way, tropical moisture our way so that by early tomorrow morning, right around seven o'clock, right around the morning commute, there could be some of those streamer showers that stream in from the south to the north. Uh, very spotty, only a few people getting rain, but it could cause dampness in spots for the morning commute early tomorrow. And again, spotty is the key there. We'll see a little bit of a break before a chance for some more showers in the afternoon tomorrow, but really the main area of significant 
rain will be out west from Del Rio to Rock Springs across parts of the hill country later on in the day. This is that energy leftover from Norma that's going to be moving across parts of our western viewing area. Meanwhile, for Wednesday, a low pressure system is going to be moving across Texas, bringing heavy rain to parts of North Texas. We'll be on the tail end of that. We have a slightly better chance for rain on Wednesday again, only 40%. So while rain will be hit or miss in the week ahead, winds are going to be an issue. Tie down your Halloween decorations because Monday night and Tuesday night, we could see wind gusts of up to 35 miles per hour. Take today to do that because tomorrow, you know, work day, school day, you're going to want to take today to tie down those decorations for that wind potential Monday night and Tuesday night. Otherwise, with the spotty rain in the forecast, make sure you have the KSAT Weather Authority app. We have a radar on there. If necessary, we'll also go live, especially on Wednesday when there's a chance for some storms. How badly do we need this rain? We definitely do. I mean, we're in exceptional drought, but unfortunately, Max, because of the hit or miss nature of this rain, it's not really going to help us in a major way with the drought. That'll just be annoying. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks, Sarah. <laughs> Time now, 649, 70 degrees. All right, up next, we're going to catch you up from the latest in the sports. We have UTSA, big win, winning record, whoa, to the Astros. Could we see a World Series rematch? We're going to break it down in just a few moments. Good morning. Welcome back. How about those Roadrunners all around great performance? This UTSA team is a pleasure to watch. Took on an AAC matchup against FAU yesterday. The Roadrunners defense, it was sound, not allowing a single touchdown, holding the FAU Owls to just 162 yards, while UTSA finished with 437. Quarterback Frank Harris throwing two touchdowns and two interceptions, but a statement-making game. 36-10 was the final, and the Roadrunners now have a winning record of 4-3 and three on the season. So, don't worry. We know we love the UTSA Blue and Orange, and now it is inspiring jewelry. Special jewelry collection by Kendra Scott. It's available at the Kendra Scott store. Opening today, 12 to 2 at the shops at La Cantera. For every purchase, 20% will go to the Bryce Strong Foundation, UTSA Safety, Rashad Wisdom's family, the heart and soul of the foundation. They are dedicated to improving the lives of those who are impacted by cancer. All right. After the Houston Astros winning a crucial Game 5, taking their first series lead of the ALCS, 3-2 over the Rangers, they match up again tonight. To recap, Houston won the Game 5-4, now are just one win away from, this is just ridiculous, from their third straight trip to the World Series. Although to do so, they need to find a spark at home. They've struggled at home, which I find interesting. Minute Maid usually is just bumping out there, taking on the Rangers, who, well, Pitcher, he's 3-0 this postseason. Taking the mound. Game 6 tonight. First pitch, 7-0-3. Let's talk a little college football. Texas at Houston, the football version. Eighth-ranked Longhorns back in action after a bye following their Red River rivalry loss. Texas, though, full control of the ball game early. Quinn Ewers, look at this. Exceptional throw and catch. Oh, Xavier Worthy hauling it in. That's a touchdown. Houston down 21. Donovan Smith, though, Look at this. That was beautiful. Almost wide open. Great catch. 32-yard touchdown. The Cougs tie it at 21, then 24. But UT takes the late lead. And Houston's pass attempt on fourth and inches incomplete. That came after a bad third and one call. And Texas wins 31 to 24. Other stories and scores from around the state. Baylor improving to three and four. Matt Nay, 32-29 win over new conference opponent Cincinnati, who is now two and five. Three and four, Texas Tech playing four and two, BYU on the road, and Raiders fall 27 to 14. UIW in action, McNeese State, the Cowboys enter the matchup winless, and the Cardinals do what they do. They win it big, 35 to 24. Division three action yesterday, Trinity put up 57 points on Southwestern University, staying perfect in their conference play. I'm always one of those people who, like, when there's too much basketball, I'm like, I'm ready for football. Now I'm ready for basketball. And the NBA preseason is delivering officially a wrap. Spurs finishing off their schedule. They defeated Golden State Warriors 122-117. The rookie sensation, Victor Rambayama, he led the league with 19 points, five blocks. Five blocks. That's what happens when you're 7-4. And four rebounds, only 20 minutes. But looking at the Spurs defense so far, Wemby's presence alone helping clean things up. And the rest of the team definitely bought in.
Defense. I think that we made some good strides because we were pretty poor last year, uh, and this year they seem to believe that defense can help them win basketball. Time to see it all come to life. It's some meaningful games, but don't forget to enjoy the process. We trust the process here. The Spurs regular season begins Wednesday. San Antonio hosting Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavs. Time now, 6.56. 70 degrees. We'll be right back. Alrighty, just a reminder that there are areas of fog out to the east of San Antonio. New Braunfels visibility is down to half a mile. Now it is much warmer than the last few mornings. 71 degrees in San Antonio. 60s in the hill country. Uh, today is going to be a warm and humid day. Winds will be from the southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Gusts up to 20 miles per hour. 86 degrees for the high today. Keep in mind that it is going to be windy this week, especially Monday night and Tuesday night. So take today, tie down those Halloween decorations. Make sure uh, that they're secure. Otherwise, daily chances for hit or miss rain. Hit or miss is the key word there. Not everybody's seeing beneficial rain, unfortunately, this week. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to take an hour-long break. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. All right, we are starting with a live look out at San Antonio. It was a gorgeous sunrise today. 70 degrees, so a little bit warmer than what we saw yesterday. But the big difference, all the humidity. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few months for now. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock. It is Sunday. Hey, good we morning. Towards the end of October. Did you see the sunrise this morning? Yeah, it was. It was pretty nice in downtown mm -hmm. San Antonio. But, Max, there are areas of fog. So oh, some people were not able to see the sunrise. But I think that just, like you said, it's noticeably humid outside. Very humid. Take a look outside uh, this morning. You can see on the horizon the lowering cloud deck. We do have some areas of fog visibility down to zero at New Braunfels right now. So New Braunfels area getting pretty dense fog also near Guadalupe County uh, seeing some pretty dense fog as well. In San Antonio visibility is fine. We've got peaks of sunshine here, but generally we're socked into some cloud cover and you step outside, you instantly feel the humidity instantly feel the difference in the weather pattern. It's 67 degrees in Kerrville, 71 here in San Antonio, way different than yesterday when we started off at 59. It's 69 in Pleasanton, 73 in Del Rio, and 71 in Catula. As for your Sunday forecast, we are going to see some sun in the afternoon, 81 at noon, 86 for the high temperature. Today, though, even though temperatures will be cooler than yesterday, it is still going to feel very warm and humid all day long. We've got Southeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour, gusts up to 20 miles per hour. The humidity this week is here to stay. We don't have a cold front that's going to sweep away the humidity. However, we will have daily hit or miss chances for rain, meaning isolated rain is in the forecast. And so even though you may not get the rain, this is the thing I think that's going to impact everybody. It's going to be windy at times this week. So take today, secure those Halloween decorations, especially those outdoor Halloween decorations, the lightweight ones, as it is expected to get windy at times this week. More on the forecast, including our daily hit or miss chances for rain coming up in a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Big update this morning to a shooting that happened back in August. San Antonio police making an arrest, charging 34-year-old Scotty Ferguson with murder. So this is what we know right now. Arrest records show police were called to a shooting at an apartment complex on Upland Road so near east side back on August 8th. Investigators found a man inside his apartment with multiple gunshot wounds. So that man was taken to the hospital. That's where he later died. But earlier that night, a man was seen flagging down an ambulance. He was taken to the hospital with a gunshot wound. Police discovered that these two incidents were in fact connected to that shooting on Upland. And after searching through surveillance footage from the apartment complex, Ferguson was taken to jail and booked for murder. Also new this morning, a crash near East South Cross Boulevard ends with one man dead and another in the hospital. San Antonio police tell us that this all happened when a speeding driver crossed over a double yellow line, hit an incoming truck head on. Now, that driver, believed to be in his 20s, pronounced dead on the scene. Meanwhile, the truck driver taken to the hospital. They are recovering. We expect more information throughout the day, so make sure to stay with us on air and online. 
Tejano San Antonio based stories exclusively performed at a West Side theater. They're going to be put on pause, but they're put on pause for a good reason. It's so that it can undergo intense renovations. The Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center expected to be fully revamped into a destination performance theater. Everything from the stage, backstage seating, building acoustics and so much more. It's going to be modernized for the next two years. The theater will be temporarily closed. We are now at the point that we have vintage equipment. We deserve the best facilities, just like there are facilities with the best amenities in other parts of town. Uh, we deserve to have those in the west side of San Antonio. So performances will continue, just not there. These partnerships are going on with other local theaters, so the new and improved theater set to reopen in late 2025. So one in eight women across the United States will develop breast cancer in her lifetime. Now, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It's an opportunity to make sure that you and your family, you have the right information. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves. So joining us today, Dr. Dalwadi, breast radiation oncologist with UT Health San Antonio MD Anderson Cancer Center. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. Thank you for having me today. Thank you for joining us dark and early on a Sunday morning. So Right off the bat, what are some of the risk factors of breast cancer that our viewers should know about? Some risk factors are not preventable, such as age, older women are more at risk, and being a woman. Other risk factors are preventable, such as obesity, never having pregnant or having a first child at an older age, the use of hormone replacement pills. Um, other risk factors are radiation exposure or a family his history of breast cancer or, or, or ovarian cancer. We talk about getting checked as often as possible. So when should women start getting checked? When should anyone start getting checked? And how often should you get a mammogram? So women of average risk should begin getting their mammogram at age 40. They should get it every one to two years. But if you have a history of radiation or many people in your family have been diagnosed with breast cancer, I would encourage you to speak to your physician to see if you qualify for earlier screening. And you know, we were talking earlier, but what does the problem look like specific to San Antonio? Honestly, in San Antonio, we're really catching up since the COVID era when um, the pandemic was at its height, um, making sure that women are getting back into clinics and getting their mammograms on time. So there is a difference between the 2D and 3D mammograms. Which mammogram should a woman ask for? And really, what's the difference? A 2D mammogram has been the standard of care for decades and honestly is able to detect most cancers. A 3D mammogram is now the standard at most modern facilities because they're able to acquire images in different angles and provide more information on how concerning a lesion is. So think about requesting a 3D mammogram if you have dense breast tissue or a strong family history and just overall at a higher risk of getting that diagnosis. If you're getting your mammogram at a specialized center, especially one with an experienced breast radiologist, you're you're going to be in good hands. And speaking of those risks, how can women lower their risks of breast cancer? So eating a nutritious, healthy diet, um, exercising, limiting alcohol, and visiting your doctor for regular exams. And of course, bringing, um, doing your mammograms for screening on time will lower your risks of being diagnosed with a advanced breast cancer. And we know being aware of the risks and being aware of your family history is so important. So tell us about possibility of genetic testing and even counseling. So most, most women with breast cancer will actually qualify for genetic screening based on the most recent guidelines. Um, but for women without a breast cancer diagnosis, it's less clear. Um, and genetic counseling may not be needed. If you have a strong family history of cancer, it would be worth talking to your primary care doctor to see if you would be able to get genetic screening to better understand your risk. All right, Dr. Dawadi, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate your time. Anyone who missed any part of the interview, we're going to have all this information, what you and your family need to know. Just head to the leading essay section on ksat.com. Time now, 808, 71 degrees. We have a lot to come here on GMSA. The Civic Park at Hemisphere will have a green lawn all year long, thanks to a special irrigation system created by engineers. What kind of water they're using 
and how it all works right after the break. And if you haven't been to the new hemisphere, it looks amazing. It really is a modern marvel right in the middle of San Antonio. And speaking of San Antonio, let's take a live look downtown. The sun is out. I do feel bad. Sarah had a great point. Some of you out there, you have so much fog, you couldn't even see the beautiful sunrise. Maybe someone will send some pictures in. We can only hope. We're going to check in with Sarah. What you can expect for the rest of your day in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. So, have you ever heard of the term nuisance water? I haven't. It sounds bad, right? Well, that's actually not the case for San Antonio's newest public park, Civic Park at Hemisphere. RJ Marquez explains how engineers turn the nuisance water under the convention center into a state-of-the-art irrigation system that's actually going to help keep the park beautiful around the year. The five water springs at Civic Park have quickly become a popular attraction for many visitors. The nuisance water system that we have here at Civic Park is one of the most unique features about the park. You heard that right. Nuisance water is part of the park's unique irrigation system. We got a look at how all of this works. What the design does is capture um, that nuisance water from the French drains around the convention center. The groundwater is then filtered and sent to the connecting springs in Great Lawn. The water does not come from the Edwards Aquifer or city's water system, meaning there will be no water and restrictions during drought periods. Believe it or not, we installed this lawn in July. We never had to pull potable water, and this lawn was emerald green from the day we put it in. Another interesting part of this irrigation system is the underground cistern, which is directly below us right now. It is 40 feet below ground and collects more than 41,000 gallons of water. 16 different parts um, that made eight kind of clamshells. So there's uh, eight bottom pieces that go around, they interlock together. And if you can imagine that, it's as big as a swimming pool. It's huge. The system also waters the park's 200 trees and shrubs. This is all part of Civic Park's conservation efforts. When we were thinking about the design, we were thinking about water sustainability and being able to use nuisance water is one of the most sustainable practices that we could think of. It's been such a joy to watch people come in and enjoy the springs, dip their feet in the water. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Okay, that so is so awesome. It's beautiful. And I, anyone out there watching, if you haven't been out to the new Civic Park, it's awesome. Head out there. Beautiful day to walk around. Yeah. Is it? Is it a beautiful day to walk around? It'll be humid. Okay. Today. And Max, some water. we've been spoiled with the low humidity the last week and a half or so. So humidity is back in a big way. Some areas even seeing some fog this morning. I want to show you this picture that was sent in to us through the KSAC Connect. You mentioned the beautiful sunrise. Nice. That's out in Quero, but notice at the bottom of your screen there, you can see the fog oh, yeah. there as well. Yeah, so we've got some patchy fog in the valleys around uh, south central Texas and some dense fog out in in Guadalupe and parts of Comal counties. You can see that visibility is down to zero in New Braunfels, down to only a quarter of a mile in San Marcos, down to a little bit more than half a mile in Seguin and down to zero in Gonzales. This is where the densest fog is, but as you're driving around San Antonio this morning, you may see some areas of patchy fog out there. You can see outside right now, we've got plenty of cloud cover, some areas of sun, but at the airport, it's completely cloudy, 71 degrees. And again, the biggest thing you notice is the humidity. Dew points are in the upper 60s. That is muggy. Yesterday, our dew points were in the 40s. So, yes, we have seen the return of humidity, and the humidity is not going to go anywhere this week. Dew points are going to stay high all week long. We do not have one of those cold fronts sweeping through that would allow for drier conditions in San Antonio. So, it's going to stay humid all day long. Take a look at temperatures around San Antonio 71 degrees in San Antonio, 65 in New Bronx. 67 in Kerrville, 74 in Del Rio, 66 in Rock Springs. That compared to yesterday when we were starting off the day in the 50s. And then again, this is the biggest change. Dew points up some 20 to 25 degrees just within the last 24 hours. Noticeably humid all day long. By 10, we're going to be at 75, 81 at noon. In the afternoon, partly cloudy skies and 86 degrees. You know, yesterday we got up to 93. So we will be seven degrees cooler today. But to be honest with you, it may just feel a little bit warmer outside today because of that humidity. So keep that in mind. Then mostly cloudy this evening and temperatures will not cool down that easily. It's still going to be in the 70s. 
cities uh, after sunset. And take a look off to the west here. You can see there's Tropical Storm Norma. Tropical Storm Norma made landfall in Cabo San Lucas as a Category 1 hurricane. That is going to be sending us some moisture our way. And so by early tomorrow, we have a chance for rain. Take a look at the future cast. This is tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. You can see around San Antonio, there will be some of those streamer showers early tomorrow morning. Not rain for everybody, but some of those showers that stream from the south to the north, and that could impact parts of the morning commute early tomorrow. Chances for rain tomorrow are only 30%. We're going to see a break in the rain until about the afternoon when, again, a few streamer showers are possible. No big rainfall amounts for us in San Antonio. It's going to be hit or miss. Really, the better rain chances uh, from the energy from Norma will be from Del Rio up to Sonora and Junction, perhaps as far east as Kerr County and Gillespie County. That's where the most rain will likely fall Monday and Tuesday. And unfortunately, around San Antonio, you'll be lucky if you see a decent amount of rain, the least amount of rain possible around San Antonio. So while rain will be hit or miss this week, Something that will impact everybody are the windy conditions that are expected, primarily Monday night and Tuesday night, when wind gusts could happen up to 30 to 35 miles per hour. No, it's not Halloween yet, but a lot of us have our Halloween decorations out, our lightweight Halloween decorations. Take today when the winds will be calmer to secure those lightweight Halloween decorations outside. Make sure those inflatables uh, are tied down or deflated as well. Uh, again, hit or miss rain is possible this week. 30 to 40% chance just about every single day. Coming up in the forecast, we're gonna talk about that slightly better rain chance on Wednesday. Otherwise, Max, this is a very spring-like forecast for us. Mild mornings, you're not going to need the sweater warm afternoons and daily hit or miss rain in our forecast. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Time now, just about 819, 71 degrees. So yesterday, people gathered. Remember their loved ones who died after shootings with lo local law enforcement agencies. We hear from those families in just a bit. But first, a couple still grieving from the loss of their child, turning their tragedy into purpose, a specialized home that they designed and how it saves other children preventable accidents. And before we head to break, a quick look at those lotto numbers. All right, starting off with pick three, six, zero, three, fireball three, daily four, five, zero, eight, eight, fireball five, your cash five, one, eight, 14, 17, 28, lotto Texas, eight, 12, 31, 32, 43, 46. Here we go, the powerball six, 15, 24, 67, 68. Powerball 11, power play 2, good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. It is the place where children should be their safest, their home. But every year, tens of thousands of children, they're injured by products in and around the house. Many of these accidents, they're preventable. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz takes us inside a special house created by a family trying to turn tragedy into purpose. Charlie Horn was only two years old when he was killed while trying to climb on a small dresser in his bedroom. Now his parents, Brett and Jenny, are turning tragedy into their mission. They created Charlie's House, the nation's first safety demonstration home, designed from the ground up and dedicated to reducing home accidents. It's a place where parents and caregivers can come and they can learn how to properly childproof their home. It shows parents the dangers of unsafe sleep in the nursery, furniture prone to tipping over, poisonous items and choking hazards in the bathroom, kitchen and laundry, and fire hazards they may not have thought of. There are so many hidden hazards that exist within the home, and this house is a place that parents and caregivers can visit to learn about various hazards that exist and learn what they can do to prevent risks. The house is located in Kansas City, Missouri, but families can take a virtual tour. For years, the Horns have worked with safety advocates demanding tougher standards for furniture. The new Sturdy Act does that, setting standards for furniture like the dresser that killed Charlie. And they work to draw attention to new risky products. New products are always a concern, and so it's important to keep up to date with new guidance on safe sleep. It's a constant battle, but for the Horns, it's a mission that's personal. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 
Time now, 825, 71 degrees. We have a lot to come here on GMSA with Border Patrol found after a startling discovery. And of course, the latest on Israel against the terrorist organization Hamas. But first, I want to give a special shout out to one of our directors. Support. Don is one of our directors and this is his grandson. It is his first birthday coming up this week. They had their party yesterday. So special happy birthday to little Theodore. I'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. So we know fall is seemingly in full effect. We have the pumpkin patches open, the Halloween decorations are up. But Sarah, yesterday it did not feel like fall out there. No, we got up to 93 degrees yesterday, but hey, at least the humidity was low. Now today we're gonna be cooler, but way more humid. In fact, take a look outside this morning. You can see in the visibility that it's down in New Braunfels to a quarter of a mile. Visibility is worse east of San Antonio, but you can see even in Castroville, we're dealing with five mile visibility. So as you're driving out and about this morning, you will notice areas of patchy fog. Again, the humidity, the big story this morning. That's why we're starting off some 15 degrees warmer than how we did yesterday. It's 71 in San Antonio, 70 in Helotus, 68 in Bandera, 66 in New Braunfels, 71 in Hondo, 67 in Los Maples. Good morning in Kerrville, where it's 50, uh, 68 degrees rather. And looking at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, we've got fairly cloudy skies out there right now. It's still going to be cloudy in 75 at 10, mostly cloudy around noon and 81. We won't get into the 90s today, but it is going to be humid all day long. So you'll feel every degree of that high temperature of 86 degrees and the last few nights temperatures have cooled down nicely after sunset. That's not going to be the case today. We're still going to be in the 70s after sunset. Humidity is here to stay and in the week ahead there are pretty much daily chances for hit or miss rain. Now this is not going to be that drought denting or drought busting rain that we need. Just kind of those uh, daily isolated. A few folks will get some rain rain chances in the week ahead. Now the rain will be one thing that some people People will get this week, but all of us will experience pretty windy conditions. I'll tell you what that may mean for those Halloween decorations outside coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. We know a lot of people are going to be out and about today, whether it is going to those pumpkin patches, headed to church, doing what you got to do on your Sunday mornings. But a big reminder, if you are on the roads today, the main lanes of Loop 1604 eastbound fully closed from Vance Jackson Road exit to the Lock Hill Selma Road entrance ramp. You're also going to see closures along the Loop 1604 eastbound collector distributor at the I-10 interchange and 1604 eastbound frontage road at I-10 interchange. Obviously, we're throwing a lot of numbers at you. You can check out full list of closures and detours on our website, ksat.com. All right, we have a lot coming in the newsroom this new morning. New this morning, two people in the hospital after an officer in a patrol car crashed into a vehicle. So this is what we know right now. It happened a little after 930 last night. This is the intersection of Ray Ellison Boulevard and Five Palms Drive. Police on the scene telling us an officer collided with the vehicle that had three people inside. Two of those passengers taken into the hospital with non life threatening injuries. We do expect a full report later today. The crash still under investigation. And San Antonio police searching for a suspect who allegedly stabbed his ex-girlfriend's new boyfriend in the leg. This happened a little after 2 a.m. today. This is on e Southeast Military Drive. It all unfolded in a parking lot of City Base Cinema San Antonio. A police on the scene telling us the new couple met up in the parking lot, and that's when the woman's ex-boyfriend showed up. The two men, the ex and the current boyfriend, they start fighting. The ex pulled out a knife, stabbed the new boyfriend in the leg. Uh, that new boyfriend taken to the hospital. At last check, he's stable. Police did find a gun in the parking lot, but the suspect had already taken off at that time. The investigation is still ongoing, but as we told you, police do know who is responsible. A call for justice and remembrance. Families, and friends, honoring more than a dozen people yesterday who died after shootings with local law enforcement agencies. Now, Avery Everett spoke to some of those families who want to make sure their loved ones' memories are never forgotten. You never know what road they were going to go down because they were all taken away from us. 
17 faces. It's an unbearing pain. And 17 names. We lost Marquise Jones in 2014. But family and friends say it's not so easy to count the memories and stories of these 17 people who were killed by police and deputy shootings. Stop looking at them as criminals or whatever the case may be that you want. These were human beings. These were people's family members. These were people who were loved. That love living on through the memories of their families. Always, always, always making jokes, hilarious, like just over the top hilarious. Even with a stain on the stories of their deaths. He was shot 12 times from behind. On the eve of a national coalition's anti-police brutality day, and the day after the heavenly birthday of Andre A.J. Hernandez, the 13-year-old boy who was shot by SAPD police in 2022. Families say they're living with the reality of not having their loved ones. Remember him as a human being that put others first before him. Some of these shootings, like that of Melissa Perez, who was experiencing a mental health crisis when she was shot and killed just months ago, ended with fired officers and more funding for mental health response. The most recent of these fatal police shootings was just one month ago. Last weekend, SAPD released the dash and body camera footage of that night, justifying the fatal shooting of Jesus Hernandez because he was holding a machete that could, quote, seriously injure or kill a civilian or officer. These displays show only a handful of people, and families hope these situations can be prevented in the future. This is what we're going to do and keep putting their names out there to where people don't forget who they were. And they hope the memories of their loved ones are never lost. SAPD says all of these shooting investigations are treated separately. When it comes to these cases where an SAPD officer shoots a suspect, that case is then sent to the DA's office for review. We reached out to SAPD for comment on the event and as of Saturday night, have yet to hear back. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. In a community still recovering from the tragic shooting at Robb Elementary, the memory of Lexi Rubio lives on in an honorary 5K run in honor of her life. So Lexi's legacy run, it now enters its second year. It took place this weekend on what it would have been her 12th birthday. An in-person run held yesterday morning at 9 a.m. in Uvalde, but participants were able to join in online. Proceeds from the run will go towards the Lives of Rob. It's a nonprofit organization started by those affected by the tragedy, including Lexi Rubio's family. Some days I run and it feels good, but some days I run and it's, I'm sad that day. Even on the difficult days, I push myself, but today it wasn't a difficult day because I was surrounded by so much love. So Lexi, one of the 19 fourth grade students who were shot and killed in Robb's Elementary, along with two of their teachers back in May of last year. In your morning headlines, Israel Defense Forces say the military has notified the families of 212 hostages that their loved ones are being held by Hamas terrorists in the neighboring Gaza Strip. That number has continued to increase as the IDF investigates the situation and gathers more intel on Hamas's October 7th attack on Israel. Obviously, a lot more updates throughout the morning. We have new updates on the humanitarian aid being brought into Gaza and the United States military ships increasing their presence in the region. Matt Gutman has the latest. This morning, Israel creeping ever closer to a large-scale invasion of the Gaza Strip, amassing hundreds of thousands of troops on Gaza's border. That is, Israel's air force continues to bomb Gaza, rescuers frantically searching for survivors, clawing through the rubble of several residential buildings after an Israeli airstrike. Nearly 4,400 dead in Gaza, and in Israel, more than 1,400. In Gaza, over 164,000 residential units destroyed, and today, Palestinian officials reporting that over 1.4 million have been displaced. With that ground invasion looming, the Rafah border crossing with Egypt briefly opening Saturday, allowing 20 trucks with critical supplies to pass into Gaza. We know that the priorities in Gaza right now are water, food, medicine, and fuel. Uh, and so that we are prioritizing our pipeline accordingly. UNICEF saying the drinking water it supplied was enough for only 22,000 people for a single day. 2.2 million live in the Gaza Strip. And now questions about when the next round of vital aid could pass through. With international concerns soaring over Palestinian casualties, we spoke with the head of the Israeli military's medical corps. Have you instructed them to help care for Palestinian casualties they find along the way if this incursion happens. To us, it does not matter who's the one lying on the floor. 
It can be an alien, it can be a tourist, it can be a Palestinian, it can be my friend. We are committed to our ethics, we are committed to our values. This comes as American citizens are still trapped inside Gaza, including 10-year-old Aden Tawil and his mother, who went to Gaza to spend time with family when the war broke out. Over the weekend, Hamas in Gaza releasing two American hostages, Judith and Natalie Ranan. The late night handoff brokered by Qatar and facilitated by the Red Cross. It spawned hope in Israel for the other 200 hostages held by Hamas, a daily protest outside the military headquarters growing overnight. Shiri Elbad's daughter, Liri, was one of those taken. Have you been here every day? We are here every day, yeah, since last uh, Saturday. And now concern is growing. Are you nervous? Are you scared now because Israel is closer to this invasion? Yeah, of course. Of course I'm because scared because, I, because what does that mean? I don't know where is my daughter. Nobody knows. That was Matt Gutman reporting. Time now just about 840, 71 degrees. All right, back here at home. A lot going on. Changing seasons, changing colors of the trees right here in South Central Texas. After the break, talking about how two years of drought, how that's going to impact what this year's foliage is going to look like. As temperatures drop during the fall season, leaves start to turn into beautiful fall colors. Trees that are native to our area, like big tooth maples and bald cypress trees, throw off these colors, especially in the hill country, lost maples, and even right here in San Antonio. Lost maples is like the highlight, the best place to view uh, fall foliage if the conditions are right, because they have the big tooth uh, maples, which is our native maple, and they can turn vibrant orange and red. And then more local in San Antonio, if it's good fall color, I mean, even the river walk is lined with those big bald cypress trees so you can get nice fall color there. Leaves start to change color as chlorophyll, which is the pigment that makes them green, breaks down as days become shorter and cooler temperatures set in. Other pigments are then revealed, which produce the yellow, orange, and red hues that appear in the fall. And even though some species of trees like this pecan tree are already starting to show signs of fall foliage, peak fall foliage doesn't take shape until mid to late November. The extent of this color changing process can be at the mercy of the weather, though, especially after two years of prolonged drought. Davis has already seen firsthand the toll that this drought has taken on local tree health and says that it could keep this season's fall foliage from reaching its maximum potential. A healthy tree is going to produce more vibrant colors. And so since we've been in two years of drought, we kind of expect there to be some dull um, leaves, premature dropping uh, because they just don't have enough water and resources to maintain those leaves. Although we had drought in place last year, foresters were surprised at 2022's fall color and attributed to higher rainfall late in the summer and in November. As for this year, while some leaves have already dropped, Davis says she hopes we're surprised again by that peak fall color time frame. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. Great story, Mia. Thank you so much. Yeah, it does not feel like fall though outside right now because humidity is back, Max, and it's not going anywhere. We're going to stay humid all day long. Let's go ahead and take a look outside with visibility right now. You can see that visibility is worse east of San Antonio. New Braunfels down to a quarter of a mile. Austin area even experiencing dense fog, less than a quarter of a mile visibility. Half a mile visibility in Gonzales and a little bit closer. You can see that Seguin visibility is less than a mile too. Even in Castro visibility down to seven miles. So we are going to see some areas of patchy fog this morning, but as you can see outside with live cam right now, also seeing a few peaks of sunshine there as well. Take a look at temperatures around San Antonio 71 in the Alamo City. This is after yesterday morning. We started off in the 50s, 68 at Stinson, 67 at Kelly and at JBSA Randolph at 68 degrees. Temperatures are some 10 to 15 degrees warmer than the start of the day yesterday around San Antonio. So you know it's going to be a bit of a different day than what we had yesterday. Yesterday we had the heat. We got up to 93 degrees, but we had low humidity all day, so it really felt okay in the shade. Today you're going to feel every single degree outside. 75 at 10 o'clock and still fairly cloudy. Around noon, mostly cloudy at 81. In the afternoon, partly cloudy skies. We're going to be topping off at 86 degrees today, and it's not going to cool down all that easily and quickly overnight tonight. Temperatures will still be in the 70s by the start of the day tomorrow. Take a look at high temperatures around the metro area. Our average high is 81. We are going to be warmer than that by about 5 degrees or so. 86 in San Antonio. High 
Condo, you'll be at 88. 88 in Bandera, 84 in Kerrville. Nixon Smiley area, 90 degrees, 90 in Floresville, 89 in Pleasanton, 88 in Seguin, and 89 in New Braunfels. Now, for the week ahead, we are going to have daily rain chances, but before you get too excited, our rain chances are relatively low, at most 40% on Wednesday. So coverage is going to be hit or miss when it comes to this rainfall. Uh, so about 30 to 40 percent. So we will get some rain from Tropical Storm Norma, but not enough to allow for us to see any real big drought denting uh, rainfall. So Tropical Storm Norma is going to fall apart across Mexico and send some moisture our way so that by the start of the morning tomorrow, there will be areas of streamer showers. Those showers that stream across from south to north around San Antonio. Again, hit or miss. There will be those that get rain, those that miss out on rain. Then as we head into the midday hours, a bit of a break tomorrow and in the afternoon with a little bit of daytime heating, a few few more showers are possible. Coverage tomorrow again only 30%. However, better rain chances the further west you go, from Del Rio to Sonora to Junction to even Gillespie and Kerr County. This is going to be the leftover energy from Norma in this area, and that's why it's going to have that better chance for showers and storms west of San Antonio. Now our rain chances continue in the week, at least isolated rain because of a trough of low pressure swinging across Texas. It's going to be providing the most rainfall for areas from Oklahoma City down to North Texas, but we'll be on the tail end of that system. So on Wednesday, a 40% chance for scattered showers and storms. So while rain chances and rain will be hit or miss, Everybody is going to experience fairly windy conditions this week, particularly Monday night and Tuesday night. We'll be looking at wind gusts of up to 30 to 35 miles per hour. I've been driving around my neighborhood. I see a lot of wonderful uh, Halloween decorations, but a lot of those are lightweight. So take today, tie down those Halloween decorations because again, it's going to get pretty windy uh, for parts of the week ahead, particularly Monday night and Tuesday night. A very spring like forecast for us. Max uh, morning lows in the 70s, so you won't need that jacket this week and then highs will be in the mid to upper 80s and it's going to stay humid all week long. No cold front to sweep out that humidity until perhaps early next week, close to Halloween. Uh, we'll be refining that forecast as we get closer to the holiday. It is cool to see after a summer of just hot, hot, hot. 100 degree day yeah. after with I mean mixing it up on the forecast yeah. a little bit. Hey, and last week we got spoiled with the low humidity, the cool mornings. This week it's going to feel more like spring. All right. Sarah Spivey, thank yeah. you so much. Time now just about 8:50, 71 degrees. A quick live look one more time. We know a lot of people headed out and about. Pumpkin patches, church, Sunday morning errands. If you are out and about, make sure to be safe, be smart. We'll be right back. making sugar skulls. The sugar skull represents your, a loved one that has passed away. And you decorate them with glitter, with feathers, colored foil, and you um, write the name of your deceased loved one on the forehead of it. And the reason that they're made of sugar is so that when you go to the gravesite, which is the, traditionally where you would place them, uh, that the ants or the rain will eventually wash it all away symbolizing this, the temporary status of life. We believe that as long as you're remembered in life, you're not dead. But what I do is I put about five pounds of sugar and five tablespoons of meringue powder. If you're gonna color it, this is where you would add the color. So once you have the sugar and the meringue powder mixed, you're gonna put in some water. And very little water is required. I get like a little thing like this and then just put it in a tablespoon at a time. And it starts to get that kind of wet sand feeling. And once it sticks together like this, that's how you know it's ready. A sugar skull mold should have two pieces, the front of the skull and the back. You pack the sugar into the mold very tightly. You take a piece of cardboard and smooth out that part and then gently lift off. Sugar skulls were originally um, done when the Spanish came over and they showed the natives how to do sugar art. So I leave them for 24 hours to dry. I like to keep everything edible as I get some royal icing. It's basically what pastry chefs use as glue. And there you go. And you've made a sugar skull. 
That is incredibly impressive. All right, as you can imagine, and as you probably know, we are getting closer and closer to this year's Dia de los Muertos Festival. It is happening next weekend, October 28th and October 29th at Hemisphere Park. You can get tickets, learn more about the events, just scan the QR code on the screen. It'll take you right to the site. Everything you need to know. All right, we got the pollen count in. Everything looks pretty good. Molds, nice. fall elm, pigweed, ragweed, all present, but in low amounts. That's a nice looking pollen count. This morning, though, visibility is still low out east toward uh, New Braunfels and Seguin, although we are starting to see visibility improve up to about three quarters of a mile in New Braunfels. You can see peaks of sunshine there off in the distance as well. And so for the forecast today, 81 at noon, 86 for the high today, southeast winds at 10 to 15, gusting up to 20. It's going to be even windier Monday night and Tuesday night. So tie down those Halloween decorations tonight. Keep in mind that it is going to be humid all week long with isolated to widely scattered rain in the forecast. So hit or miss showers for us every day and you won't need the sweater, Max. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. Thank you for spending your weekend with us. Have a great rest of your Sunday.